everyone and welcome to a new video. Today's video is one I'm very excited to be sharing because it's all about making the delightful dress that I'm currently wearing. Or perhaps I should say doll-lightful because it's actually based on a dress that was released for Barbie in 1963. This design is known as Fancy Free Barbie and it is a color blocked blue and red dress with white for crack trim. This is one of my favorite retro Barbie designs because it's so vibrant and bold and cheerful and those are all things that I associate with Barbie clothing but I feel like the color palette of this one is cranked up a little bit and so is the silhouette. It's a very full skirted dress and just the whole ensemble is very striking in my eyes and definitely something that I'd love to add into my own wardrobe. So I decided I would do just that and challenge myself to create an exact life-size replica of Barbie's fancy free design from the 1960s. So that's what I did and that's what I filmed the process of doing and that's what I'm sharing with all of you today. So I hope you enjoyed this video and let's cut to some footage of the day I got started on this dress. Now for fancy free Barbie I've purchased three yards of royal blue cotton and three yards of bright red cotton. Both of these are a Premia Kona quilting cotton. I originally wanted to get a cotton twill because I thought it would be a bit thicker uh, and just a bit more appropriate for an upscaled version of this. But the cotton is more accurate to the fabrics that were originally used for her dress. So I think it's gonna work out just fine. And then her dress is completely trimmed with white rickrack. And I actually purchased extra large one inch wide rickrack, uh, which should be to scale for my life-sized version. So step one for this is just drafting the pattern, which I've actually already done. I was originally going to use a reproduction Vogue pattern as the basis for this, but it didn't arrive on time. I decided instead I would draft my own, and I did that just by draping a quick and simple little pattern on the dress form, and then transferring that to paper. And now I have to make a mock-up of that pattern and do a fitting uh, to ensure that it looks good before moving forward with the final garment. So that is going to be task number one for this morning. Over here I have my mock-up, and I did a fitting of that over a 1950s girdle, which is the period-appropriate foundation to have underneath this. And it fit pretty well but there are a few changes I want to make. It's a little bit wide at the neck though I really like where it hits on my collarbone so I'm going to take it in by a quarter inch there just running uh, straight up from the dart and speaking of the dart there was a little bit of excess material between the two darts so I'm going to be lifting the fabric by a quarter inch there. I'm also going to let the side seams out by an eighth of an inch just so I've got a bit more wiggle room and then I'm actually going to take the center back end by a quarter inch at the hem. I also went ahead and added seam allowance to the center front edge which I originally cut on the fold for my mock-up but since my final garment's going to be pieced and have a different color on each side, there obviously needs to be a seam there. So over here you can see my original pattern on top with the Sharpie outline. So you can kind of see the alteration I made there just by splitting the fabric and taking it in. And I did that there as well. And I just made sure to mark the various alterations I was making. So this is the final pattern. And the final pattern will be available for download as a PDF on my Patreon if you're interested. And I also went ahead and add seam allowance to the front. I originally added a half inch, but then I realized I probably want to sew it as a French seam, so I added another half inch. And then this is the center back originally. And then that is the center back final. I also went ahead and marked a facing two inches away from the outer edge or an inch and a half away from the seam allowance. And I traced that onto my pattern and then I just went through with more tissue paper and traced over top of it to get a separate facing pattern. So now my two facing pieces and my two bodice pieces are each going to be cut out once from each color of fabric. To make this process faster, I've just laid out the blue fabric underneath the red and aligned the selvages as well as the torn edge because that's straighter than the cut edge, which is up there. And I'm going to position these pieces vertically on the grain and get them all nice and cut out. I think all the seams are going to be finished which means I can go ahead and cut them using normal scissors as opposed to pinking shears. Here's a bunch of footage of cutting out the bodice. I don't have a lot to say about this process but I went to the effort of filming it and editing it so I felt the need to include it. So everything's cut out now and I just wanted to mention something kind of interesting about this pattern. Usually when you have this neckline that kind of scoops up towards the center of your neck, it's actually cut as a dome. So it is lower at the shoulder and then it goes up to sit nicely over top of your neck. And with this, the dress is very clearly straight necked. So it is a right angle from the center front across the collar. So that was interesting to draft, but I really like how it turned out. Uh, so I'm hoping it turns out well in the final garment too. So everything is cut out, uh, red on one side, blue on the other. And the next step is just going to be starting to pin these pieces together. I'm probably going to pin and sew the front seam first and then pin and sew the dart and then pin and sew all the facing pieces together. What's going to be crucial here is making sure I get the checkerboard right because I can so see myself getting confused and accidentally putting blue on the wrong side. So I'm going to double check that between pinning everything. Speaking of pinning, after sewing the darts and trimming the seam allowance with pinking shears, I moved on to pinning the side seams. These were sewn with half inch French seams, so the seam was sewn once, trimmed, then folded, and sewn again. But I was too lazy to set up a camera at my sewing machine and my iron, so you're only seeing a third of the process. 
All right, so the next step is going to be attaching the facing, but first I have to hem the facing. So this is what my facing looks like. One side's blue, one side's red. Those are going to correspond with the blue and red side of the bodice. Uh, this matches the dimensions of the top edge of the bodice and then it's just two inches wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip a quarter inch into the corners. I'm also going to clip the curves and then I'm going to turn this entire bottom edge inward by a quarter inch using my iron and then I'm going to go ahead and top stitch that down. I can slip stitch it to the interior of the bodice and it won't fray. And I made the facing somewhat narrow because I figured it would be less noticeable if the stitching securing it on was closer to the top of the bodice, but I might have still made it too wide. So we'll see, but that's what I'm going to do now. And once I have pressed it, hemmed it, and pressed it again, then I can pin it onto the top edge of the bodice and get it sewn on with a half inch allowance. And after being so careful, I just realized I made a mistake, so now I have to redo part of this. Basically, I sewed together the two back facings, uh, so I sewed up the center back seam when that needs to be left open, so it can lap underneath, or over the zipper rather, and I should have sewn the front edges together. So now I have to rip that back seam out and re-sew that, and then I will proceed with hemming it. So this is the bodice with the front seam, the side seams, and the dart sewn, and then over here I have my freshly hemmed facing. So I'm just going to align the raw edges, they are even, and the right sides are facing each other and I'm going to pin all the way across the top edge all the way around the arm opening and all the way across the top back edge and then it will get sewn on with a half inch allowance. So I hemmed the facing and I pressed it and then I aligned the edges and pinned them together and then I just finished sewing the facing on. So I sewed a half inch away from all of the edges. I made sure to pivot and back stitch at the corners so now I can clip the excess material away from them and they'll be nice and sharp. I'm also going to notch all of the curved edges so the facing will turn inward smoothly at those points and I'm probably going to understitch a lot of these edges and understitching is when you flip the fabric you want to turn inward back over the seam and you make sure it's covering the seam allowance and then you top stitch on that side of the fabric as close to the seam point as you can and that will encourage the fabric to turn inward smoothly at that point. The only issue is that you can't do this all the way into corners but I can probably do it for the majority of these edges and still get most of the benefits. So I think that is what I'm going to do next. So it's day number two for this project and yesterday I was not feeling particularly chatty so I got quite a bit done and I filmed quite a bit. Uh, I'm gonna have to voice over that part and I don't quite remember exactly what I filmed because I wasn't talking through it in the moment. Did someone say voiceover? Here I am measuring out the skirt pieces and cutting them to the right size. The skirt is made of two giant rectangles, so this was pretty easy. And yes, in hindsight, I should have ironed the fabric first. It didn't look that bad a person, I swear. Which is weird because this is one of those fabrics that you look at and it creases. The skirt pieces were then ironed and seamed together at the front using a French seam. I also cut out the pockets, which are more rectangles. I marked a line one inch away from the top edge, folded the edge inward to meet that line, then inward again to create a half inch rolled hem. Rig rack was then pinned along this edge and sewn down off camera. Off camera I also folded the remaining three edges inward by approximately 5 eighths of an inch using my iron. And then I marked their placement on the skirt panels with chalk, also off camera. And then Rick Rack was pinned around the entire top edge of the bodice and pleated at the corners so it would lay smoothly. And I think that catches you up. This is what the bodice looks like now. I got all of the Rick Rack trim sewed around the neckline. And on the doll's dress they actually secure all of the trim using red thread but I switched thread colors halfway through so there wouldn't be a obvious line of stitching around the neckline. I just stitched as close to the edge as I could, which is usually called edge stitching as opposed to top stitching. Now I still have to sew the facing down. You can probably see the line of pins near the hem of the facing. So I have to cross stitch that in place by hand, which I just didn't feel like doing last night. The trim is on and I'm really happy with how it sits on my dress form, though I haven't done a proper fitting yet. I also cut out the two panels for the skirt, which are each 30 inches long and two yards wide. Then I actually measured the doll skirt and the doll skirt is like four inches long and my skirt is 30 inches long. So one inch of the doll's dress is like nine inches of my dress or something similar to that. I did the proper math last night. So I used that as a guide for figuring out how big the pockets should be and where the pockets should be positioned to be proportional to Barbie's original dress. I feel like the pockets ended up being slightly too big, so I actually turned the bottom edge inward by an additional half inch and now I think they look a bit better. The pockets are just rectangles and then I turned the top edge inward by half inch twice. I sewed the rick rack over top of it with two lines of stitching to make sure it was extra secure. After attaching the trim to the top edge, I turned all of the edges inward by a half inch, or actually about five eighths of an inch, a little more than a half inch, just because as I said, they looked a little large. They marked a line measuring down from the top edge and away from the center edge, and I positioned the pocket on those lines. So the red pocket's already 
sewn on. Now I have to change out the thread color of my machine to blue so I can sew this pocket on without there being any uh, especially visible top stitching. And then the next step is actually going to be gathering down the top edge. And I was looking at the doll and it looks like the pocket aligns with the darts at the bodice. It's sort of a straight line from the dart to the beginning of the pocket. So that means I'm going to gather from this point to the center front to be the exact width between the center front of the bodice and the dart. I'm going to measure from the dart to here and that's what I'm going to gather that portion of the skirt down to and then the rest of the skirt will just be evenly gathered uh, to match the rest of the width of the bodice. And I think for the actual doll they struggled to get the gathers to line up perfectly with the center seam so they ended up covering it with rickrack or perhaps that was a design choice from the beginning but also had the handy effect of covering that seam as well. So there you can see the pockets and actually I was wrong they did sew the pocket on with blue thread but if you look around the neckline they used red thread to secure the rickrack they didn't bother changing thread colors and it is the same deal for the hem. It's really obvious there. And here's what I mean about the pockets looking too big. They just look like they're too close to the hem of the skirt. So I feel like I should have made my skirt longer, but it's a little bit late to do that. The only thing I can really do at this point is hem it with a really narrow hem. I was also concerned that on a larger scale, by having my pocket up as high as theirs, they would interfere with the gathers and gape open. So I did try and lower it a little bit, but that made the proportion below the pocket just slightly off. So it's not as perfect as I would like it to be for such a simple dress, but hopefully it will end up looking okay in the end. The pockets do sort of just blend in uh, because they are matching the color of that side of the skirt. For some reason in my head, I thought the red pocket was on the blue side and vice versa, but evidently not. So I sewed the pocket on and then I ironed it and then I just took some measurements and figured out what I need to gather the top edge down to. So I'm going to have all of these measurements in the bodice pattern up on Patreon for download if you're interested uh, and I will make them look prettier than the sheet in front of me currently does. But basically the back one and a half inches are going to be left ungathered, the middle portion is going to be gathered down to 11 inches on each side and then the front most 20 inches are going to be gathered down to three and three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to be doing this with heavy duty coats and Clark upholstery thread just because then it's less likely to break when you're putting tension on it, which you do tend to do when creating gathers. I'm going to create the gathers by hand uh, just by sewing two lines of running stitches and pulling them taut as they sew. And I'm going to gather it down sections. So I'm going to gather down the front uh, 20 inches of each side first, and then I'll gather down the middle portions of each side to 11 inches separately. And that makes it easier to get the gathers even just because they're not uh, moving about across the entire edge. They're kind of contained to smaller sections because the thread and the stitching is tied off at various points. So I'm almost done gathering this and I just want to show you something. I might make a whole video about this at some point because I get a lot of questions about how you smoothly sew on a gathered skirt to a bodice without having fabric fold up and getting caught in the seam and just having it look really ugly. And what I like to do is instead of just gathering at the point where I'm going to be sewing it on, instead I gather a quarter inch above and below that point. So I'm not going to be stitching on here or here, I'm actually going to be stitching between those two points but I've gathered away from those two points so the fabric is nicely oriented regardless of where my stitching ends up being. So that's what two rows of gathering does. For example, here I just have one row of gathering and if I was trying to sew this on, you can see how the fabric flares up and really wants to interfere. And it's really actually quite difficult to smooth all of that down. Uh, and to get the fabric nicely oriented to sew it on. And then you have to make sure that you're sewing on that exact line of gathers because if you sew below it, the fabric isn't gonna look pretty. And if you sew above it, then you're gonna be too close to the raw edge of the material. So when you have two rows of gathering, there's just a larger margin for error and I find it ends up looking a lot nicer. Sometimes I remove the second line of gathering stitching after I've sewn on and treat it more like basting stitches. And sometimes I leave it in because it's actually nice having that uh, kind of little bit of gathering at the top edge before the skirt flares out. Sometimes it can just look more flattering. But that is a really easy way to sew on a gathered skirt and have your gathers be a little bit more manageable to sew on. Uh, and it's much easier to sew the second line of gathering stitching before you actually gather down the top edge of the fabric. So I always work with really long threads for this. So I can keep the fabric pretty smoothed out when I go to sew the second line of gathering stitches, which is what I'm going to do now. Now it's time for the super satisfying part where you gather down both threads at once. And actually instead of pulling on the threads, I like to uh, kind of pull on the fabric and just put even tension on the threads uh, and then you're putting less tension on the threads in general and they're less likely to break though that's not really a concern with the upholstery thread and sometimes like I don't know if you can tell but this bottom thread clearly isn't gathered as tightly as the top one so then I'll just give it an extra little tug and there you go it's gathered down and you can tie the threads off and then manipulate the gathers across the thread however you want so they look nice and even. And I just brought the threads to the underside of the fabric so then I can thread my needle back on them and just tie them off. But first I have to make sure that this measures 11 inches because that is what I'm supposed to gather it down to. And I got that like bang on correct just by eye. It's exactly 11 inches. 
So now I shall tie it off and then I can get this pinned onto the bodice. Though actually I should do fitting with the bodice first and make sure it fits nicely because if I need to take it in or let it out, it's gonna be way easier to let out the side seams before I sew a skirt onto it. So I definitely need to do that first even though I absolutely despise doing fittings. So it's certainly much nicer with a project where you just have to hook yourself into a girdle as opposed to one where you have to lace yourself into a corset. Actually, it's going to be much more comfortable doing a fitting if I have removed the pins from the facing. And to remove the pins, I have to sew the facing down. So I think I'm going to do that first, and then I will do my fitting. And I don't want to use the giant spools of thread for this because I currently have my machine threaded with them. So I'm going to have to use some Guterman thread, and that means I get to go into my thread drawer. And very few things in life make me happier than my thread drawers. We obviously have to ignore this part, but other than that, aren't they beautiful? I love them so much. And I think this will be a good match for the blue side. And I think this will be a good match for the red side. And speaking of the satisfying things, I love it when you have thread that perfectly matches a project. So the facing has been sewn on and I just did the fitting and it looked great. I'm really happy with where the waist sits. I'm really happy with how it sits across my shoulders. All my alterations after constructing the mock-up were definitely worth making uh, because it looks so much better than the mock-up did. So I'm really pleased with that. It's probably a little bit large, like I could almost take the waist in at the side seams by a quarter inch, but right now the waistline has some give to it because it's just a single layer of fabric. Once I sew the skirt on, it's gonna be a little bit thicker just because of the amount of space the gathered material takes up. And it's also going to lose its ability to stretch and warp because it will be turned into a seam and it will have stitching securing it. So I think it'll probably fit perfectly once I get the skirt sewn on, which is ideal. So I've gone ahead and evenly distributed the gathers uh, across the top edge of the skirt. I've also marked the points using pins that need to line up with the darts. And then of course this seam needs to line up with the center front seam. And then the back edges will just align with the back of the bodice. So I'm going to get it pinned on with the right sides facing each other. And then I can get it sewn on. And then it'll start to look like a dress, which is very exciting. So the skirt is sewn on and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Can we just take a moment to appreciate how well I got that lined up? I'm proud, but it's going to get covered with rickrack anyway, so no one will be able to tell. But I sewed the skirt on, and I sewed another line of stitching a quarter inch away from that, and then I trimmed the excess material above the second line of stitching using pinking shears so it will be less prone to fraying. And then I pressed that, so the seam allowance is up into the bodice, and now that seam allowance is actually going to get top stitched down in the process of attaching the rickrack. So I was originally going to hand sew the rickrack on, but theirs is sewn on by machine. They actually used red thread for it. Uh, it's not very noticeable on their tiny scale but definitely would be on this. So I'm going to be using white thread to sew it on. I think I'm going to do this with two rows of stitching. So one is going to be straight across the bottom scallops and then the other is going to be a half inch above that straight across the top scallops. And hopefully it looks relatively even. If it doesn't, then I think I have enough rickrack that I could rip it off and redo it by hand, but hopefully it won't come to that. I also have noticed a little stain on the fabric right here. So hopefully I can artfully place the rickrack in such a way to cover that. So I'll show you what it looks like when I have it pinned on and I also have to make a white bobbin and rethread my sewing machine once again. Really not enjoying all of the rethreading uh, when it comes to making this project. All right, so the rickrack is pinned on. I managed to get it to cover that stain and I also tried to make it uh, relatively symmetrical. So there's the center of one scallop centered on the garment and then it should end at the same point on both sides. So when I sew a zipper into the back, the rickrack should look continuous, or at least that is my hope. And their garment has snap closures on the back, but I'm gonna use a zipper because that's more in line with closures they used on other Barbie garments from this period. It's also just a lot more convenient when it comes to uh, getting the dress on on your own, which is generally how I get dressed. Because as much as I love my assistant Persephone, she is not particularly good at doing up closures. So as I said, I have to change the thread out, get this sewn on, and then I'm actually gonna sew up part of the back seam in preparation for installing the zipper. So the rickrack is on and I'm really happy with how it looks. It looks very smooth and very sharp. And I just think it looks great. And the top stitching isn't too noticeable either. And that top stitching securing it in place has also secured the gathers so they sit upright so they shouldn't move around and cause anything to look weird. I've also gone ahead and sewn up the majority of the back skirt seam and then just pressed the allowance open. I sewed it with a one inch allowance and then I turned the back edge of the bodice, the portion of the seam that was left open, inward by an inch. And now I'm going to sew my zipper in. I've just realized that this process is going to be so annoying because I'm going to have to switch threads partway through to sew each side. That'll be great. Uh, and my zipper actually isn't really long enough for this project, so I'm going to have to install a hook and eye at the very top, but I would probably do that anyway just to keep it closed because I don't fully trust zippers. I've had them go down on me when they weren't supposed to before. And I am using a proper vintage metal tooth zipper that I picked up at a thrift store ages ago. So I sewed the zipper in and it looks really crooked and bad and it didn't look this way when I pinned it but after I finished sewing it I tried to put the garment on and I was like 
what the crap. Also, this zipper is just too short. I need a longer zipper that goes all the way up there. So I'm gonna rip the zipper off, replace it with a plastic red one because unfortunately I don't have a white one in my stash. Then I'm going to re-sew it and hopefully have better results. <laughs> It's time for another brief voiceover. Here I'm ironing the bottom edge inward by a half inch, the smallest hem I could really do since I cut the panels too short. Then before even sewing the hem, I pinned rickrack all the way across of it. So I still have to press it, but the second attempt at the zipper went so much better. It was long enough that I could bring it all the way to the top, but I decided against doing that. Instead, I'm gonna add a hook and bar there, and that'll hopefully make the rickrack look relatively seamless around the top edge. And speaking of rickrack and edges, I also went ahead and turned the bottom edge inward by a half inch using my iron. And the bottom edge was actually cut on the fabric selvage, which is a pre-finished edge, so I didn't have to worry about doing a rolled hem or anything to finish it further. I had originally planned on doing almost a three inch wide hem on this project, but once I started playing with the pocket placement and started doing fittings, I realized I cut the panels to be pretty short. So I ended up just doing the smallest hem I could. And then I positioned Rick Rack underneath the hem and pinned it in place and edge stitched it on. So now Rick Rack is secured around the entire perimeter of the hem. And I used blue thread for that side and red thread for this side so it will look nice and sharp and pretty. So now the final step is just going to be sewing on that hook and bar and also sewing up the straps. So if we look at the doll, you can see that instead of there being a traditional shoulder seam where the pieces are placed together and sewn together, instead the front pieces are lapped over the back pieces and then they're tacked together. So that's what I'm going to do for mine. So this is the back strap, and as you can see, it's sort of a straight line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a line a half inch away from that point, and then I'm going to lap the front panel over until it aligns with that line, the edge of the material, not the edge of the trim. So the front edge of the arm and opening is aligned with the back edge. And then I'm just going to take a few stitches by hand, probably from the back side, and just tack the two layers together so that is nice and secure. And that will form the strap. And I could just as easily do this by machine, uh, just do a row of top stitching there. Actually, maybe that's what I'll do because my machine is currently threaded with red and I really don't think you'd notice. All right, so I'm not sure if I'm doing that by hand or by machine. I'm gonna sew the hook on first, which definitely has to be done by hand, and then I'll figure it out and show you what it looks like on the dress form. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. So here we have the doll and here we have the dress and I'm very, very happy with how it looks. I'd be happier if it would focus, but we can't have everything in life. There we go. So I think it looks really cute and I think the proportions are awesome. I'm definitely gonna have to stuff another petticoat under this, but that's no big deal. Uh, so the zipper's installed. I sewed the hook into the top of it. So it looks like that from the back in case you're wondering. And I also tacked the shoulders together and did a fitting and I'm so happy with how it looks. I did end up deciding to tack the shoulders by hand. So there's just a little singular tacking stitch that you can see from the front, but other than that, it looks pretty smooth. I'm also really happy with how smooth the facing ended up looking underneath it. So I'm Sometimes you can kind of see a shadow uh, from where the facing is stitched on just from the indentation when pressing it, from the folded edge of the facing, and also from the stitches securing it. So the fact that that doesn't show up I think is great, and I just think it looks really clean and sharp, and I'm so pleased with it. However, there is one thing I'm going to do, and that is sew the pockets shut, which I know sounds horrible, and I might remove these stitches at some point in the future. But honestly, with big bag pockets like this, it looks very awkward if you actually put anything in the pocket, because it creates an indentation in the petticoat at that point, which kind of ruins the silhouette of it. It can also warp the skirt because it's pulling on it in different spots, and I just don't think it's the best idea. I think I've said this controversial opinion before, but I'm not a huge fan of pockets and dresses. And the reason I'm gonna sew them closed is because like I suspected, there's a bit of a gaping problem at the top, just with how close it is to the gathered edge of the skirt. So since the skirt is gathered at that point, the fabric underneath the pocket is crinkled up and that causes the top of the pocket to gape away from the fabric, which we don't see on Barbie's dress because the scale is smaller, uh, so the fabric acts like it is stiffer and her dress probably isn't as densely gathered at the top of mine. So the way you could fix this and leave the pockets open is by interfacing the pocket pieces before you sew them on so they're stiffer, and then it should sit flat against the fabric, but be warned it will probably also cause the fabric to sit kind of weirdly flat at that point and not drape as nicely as the rest of the skirt. You could also just sew some snaps in to keep the top of the pocket closed, but for the reasons I just mentioned, I don't see myself really using the pockets on this dress, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use some running stitches to secure the top edge edge closed, and they'd be really easy to remove in the future uh, if I do decide that I want to have pockets. But once that's done, this dress will be finished, and I can get some photos of it, and we can cut to an outro. I am really, really happy with how this turned out. The fabric colors match so perfectly, and it's just so vibrant and bold, and I love the silhouette, and everything I like about the doll version of this dress, I like about the full-size version of the dress, too. My only slight disappointment is that I couldn't find a heavier fabric or less wrinkle-prone fabric to make this dress out of. With my previous Barbie designs, 
lines, I feel like I've elevated the life size version slightly and made them out of dress weight textiles that are more appropriate for life size everyday clothing. And with this I used a cotton which though very similar to the doll's dress fabric is not the most practical for day-to-day -day wear just with how thin it is and how prone it is to wrinkling. But it is pretty much a spot-on match and I do very much like how identical it looks to the doll's dress. This project took me two afternoons to make and they were very enjoyable afternoons indeed. It came together so simply and so beautifully and I just loved the process and I loved the dress that I ended up with. And you can't ask for much better than that. And I hope you guys loved this video as well. If you did, giving it a like and a comment really helps me out. I'll definitely be doing more of these in the future, so if you wanted to stick around and subscribe, that would be great as well. I'd love suggestions for which Barbie ensemble I should make next, though I definitely have a few ideas of my own, and I'm always open to video ideas just in general. But before I go, I do want to give a shout out and thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who have made videos like this one and all the ones on my channel possible. There will be a whole bunch of their names on screen, and these are the credits from October 2020, but I want to give a special shout out to my top tier patrons who are Mary Kinsey, Cass, Tracy Smith, Courtney F., Mo Quintana, Sharon Cyrus, Emma Hargrave, and Jordan Carpenter. Thank you so much for your support, thank you so much to all of my patrons, and thank you so much to all of you lovely people who are currently watching this video. I really do appreciate it a lot. And on that note, I will talk to all of you very soon.